Hello and welcome to another Developing Perspective tutorial video. I'm your host, David Smith, and today we're going to be talking about making an app preview. App previews are something that were introduced in iOS 8, and they're a way for app developers like myself to showcase your application in a much more engaging, lively, and really complete way than we had before. Prior to app previews, all we had available to us was five static screenshots in the App Store and some description text. App previews give us the opportunity to create a 30 second video that tries to give a potential customer, a potential downloader, someone who's thinking about our application, a, a more rich and full impression of what that experience might be if they go ahead and hit, hit download, hit get uh, in the App Store. Making app previews is a bit outside of my usual expertise and skills. You know, I'm a developer by trade. I make apps, I spend my days in Xcode making things. Making an app preview was something kind of different than that. It made, forced me to learn a few extra things and allowed me to make, you know, forced me to really think about how I can present my application. I'm not just when I'm coding it, you know, I'm thinking about the user's experience in building it or in how they actually use it in practice. But an app preview, it's just 30 seconds. It's a very short snippet trying to give a user a pretty deep impression of what the using that app is going to be. And ultimately, it's also a marketing message. It's me trying to explain to my user, this is something that you're going to want to use, you're going to want to hit download, so it has to be somewhat compelling. I'm by no means an expert at this. You know, I'm just, I'm a novice. This is, I think, my fifth or sixth video I've ever, you know, essentially made and published on YouTube, so I'm by no means a pro at this. But this is my experience, and hopefully because I'm coming from a place that is somewhat inexperienced, I'm going to be able to be a bit more accessible and relatable. So without any further ado, Let's get started. All right, so the approach I took for putting together this app preview was relatively simple. Like I said, I don't have extensive marketing background. This isn't something that is, you know, I'm, I'm a pro at. So instead, I wanted to rely on something that I could reasonably do. I wanted to make a short video. The video can only be 30 seconds, so it's intrinsically short. But I wanted to have that short message, the short video have a message, have something that was compelling. It seemed like I only have 30 seconds, so I want to at least be able to communicate a specific experience, a specific expectation that someone downloading this app is going to have. And so what I came up with was a little bit of a slogan, a little bit of a, you know, kind of like a marketing pitch. And I think this works. Uh, app previews theoretically have sound. And I think I'll talk about sound in, a little bit later as I talk about how I layered this, this preview together. But I think it's also important to make sure that you don't rely on sound. Because I know for myself, when I'm browsing the app store, I often don't look, don't have a, the sound turned on, or it's in a context where it would be kind of awkward to listen to it. Unless I have my headphones in, I don't really want to have it make any noise when I hit play. So I want to, with that in mind, this is the preview I came up with. And so before uh, I dive into how I built this, I just figured I'll show it to you, and then I'll break down the components of how I did it and why I did it. So next 24 seconds, this is the actual preview. You can see it up here, and let's go. Okay, so that's my app preview. 24 seconds, nothing too crazy. So what I came up with when I was trying to plan this out was I was going to, I decided I was going to have a simple, fairly simple message. It was going to be Pedometer++, the app I'm talking about today, I should probably actually mention that. The app I'm talking about today is an app I made called Pedometer++. Uh, Pedometer++ is an application for tracking your steps uh, using the M7, M8 processor in modern iPhones. And so it's a step counter. It lets you track how far you've walked in a given day and hopefully let that information be helpful to you. Um, so I came up with a, a fairly simple slogan, something for, you know, easy and easy ex expressible, easily expressible in about 30 seconds. And that, is, let me just jump to the end so I can show it to you here, is, you know, pedometer plus plus. Set a goal. Um, let me make that a little bit bigger. Pedometer plus plus. Set a goal. Start walking. Get fit. Today. That was what I wanted to communicate. That was sort of what I came up with as my pitch. That if someone was sitting in the app store looking at this application, what would they want? They'd probably want, they're in the health and fitness section or they're looking for a pedometer, they want to get fit. So how, I want to be able to communicate this basic sort of user story uh, of the application. And I think that's a good way to think about these apps in general, is that 
you want to be able to ex express something that will make the user be like, yes, that is what I want to do. And so I'm going to go and download your app as a result. So that was my goal. Set a goal, start walking, get fit. Like that's the basic premise of Pedometer++. Plus Plus. Once I had that, I then had to think about, okay, what am I going to, how am I going to express that? You know, and a lot of this has to be a, a UI walkthrough. It's probably fair to say you're not allowed in app previews to do anything that isn't sort of text and the, like banner kind of stuff or direct screenshots and videos recorded of your application. There's no like live action. It can't be like set a goal and then you see the person, you know, taking their phone and put it, they're putting it in their pocket, getting up and walking out the door. Like it can't be a live action video. It has to just be the app. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to communicate this process. Set a goal, start walking, get fit. So first thing I did um, was I recorded a couple of different clips of me using the application. And you can do this um, using the using QuickTime Player on any, uh, any Mac running Yosemite. Um, basically, you connect it to the QuickTime Player. You, do a, you, say you, wanted, you set your camera's screen as the video input and recording. And there's plenty of tutorials about how to do that, um, which are a bit beyond what I wanted to talk about today. But so what I wanted to do is I went, first thing I did is I recorded a video about setting a goal. Um, and so this is just me, here he is. So this, I just recorded a video um, of me in the app, inputting the, um, ch you know, ch setting a step, step goal up here, and then closing that panel in the app. That's all it is. It's a pretty straightforward video. The, the whole thing's about 30 seconds or something. Um, and my goal of that is just to capture that set a goal phase. Then how was I going to do the, the start walking phase? And this is where things get a little bit tricky because obviously with an app like this, you want to be able to um, give the sense of motion, but it's tricky because obviously the phone has to be attached to a lightning connector, um, connected to a phone, uh, to, to a laptop in order to do this. And I also wanted to be able to demonstrate um, a large amount of walking because a whole day is about 10,000 steps. So tracking that a video you know, for a whole 18 hours wasn't going to work. So I built a custom version of the application, or really I just added a few methods to my application for this purpose. And so it just simulates me walking. So this is a video I recorded of a custom build of the app that was just me, you know, that just essentially randomly increments the app as it goes, but it's doing it in such a way that it's, you know, it's, it's reasonable. The data that's also in the application is all fake. Um, which is something you have to keep in mind is what you're going to show is a representative set of data, an encouraging set of data. You know, as you can see here, I show like them getting doing more and more steps over time. This kind of thing. You want to be thoughtful about what you're putting in the app and what you're showing because that's what the user is going to see. You don't want it to be empty. You want it to be you know representative and part of the message that you're going to show. And so here it is. This is the video I recorded. So this is just it gradually counting up. Um, and I wasn't too worried about the speed or how long this video was or how long it took to get to the goal because I can adjust that all in Final Cut Pro later, which is what I'm using to do the editing. And there you go. So you see it hit 10,000 steps. In Pedometer++, when you hit 10,000 steps, you get this confetti that comes down, and that's kind of my video. Those two components are the only two things in the video that are actual you know, sort of screenshots from the application itself. So then the next thing I wanted to do is kind of work on the pacing. I wanted to think about what it is that I want to communicate and what's the most efficient way for me to do that communication. So what I did first is I found some music. Um, I got found this on, I think it's a website called Audio Jungle, which is a place that you can license music for this kind of purpose. Um, I found, I searched honestly just for things that were encouraging, motivating, that kind of words. And eventually I found this song, uh, it's called Happy. Um, and it was perfect for what I was trying to do. It's a little bit techno. I'll play a little bit for it now. It's very you know, friendly and happy, and it has this lovely crescendo about um, about I think it's about eight, ten seconds in or so. It has this lovely crescendo where it goes, you know, and that was perfect because once I heard that, I knew it was going to be the song for me because that's when I can have this kind of like my confetti come down, you hit your goal. So I had this music and I was like, okay, it's perfect. I found it. I licensed it. You know, paid paid my fee. Um, so, I have, so I can legally use it, take that, bring it into Final Cut Pro. I'm by no means a pro in Final Cut Pro. I kind of know what I'm doing, but I don't really. It's, it's easy enough once you kind of get the hang of it. And the best part I would say is that there are a million tutorials on YouTube about other filmmakers who know a lot more than I do. You can walk you through a lot of the ins and outs. And so I'm going to assume a basic level of understanding with it. 
Um, but basically, you know, you have your clips, you have your parts that make up your video, you have your preview window, and you have your timeline. And you're just trying to build the parts of this. Um, that's all you, that's as far as I'm going to go on the actual Final Cut Pro side, but that's what all you're trying to do. So once I had that, I layered down my music, right? So now I have this thing. It has this beautiful little um, build up as we go. You can kind of see it here. And then right here is that crescendo. That's where, you know, the, the, the sound kicks in. That's where I was going to have my confetti. So then I just kind of worked backwards. And all I did was take, I dragged in some basic titles. And so in Final Cut Pro, you just come in here, you know, you can just go into the title browser. And I think these are just the standard, um, what I ended up using was just uh, this basic title, this basic title type. Because I didn't want any animation or things with it really. I played a little with that, but it ended up looking just cheesy. In my experience, when you're starting something out like this and you don't really know what you're doing, simple is going to come across a lot better than complicated and fancy. Like having just really hard cuts with really simple designs probably going to look a lot better and age a lot better than trying to be fancy. And so I just took this basic title and I drew, you know, you just take this and drag it into my timeline like that. Um, and the result, let me get rid of that. The result was just this, you know, I come in here and I put in, I typed in what I wanted, chose the font, etc. like basic stuff. It's pedometer plus plus, um, set a goal, start walking, get fit today. Um, oops, no, I'm sorry. The first one was pedometer plus plus. That's right, it didn't seem quite right to me. That was, I was looking at the last one. So the first title, it just says pedometer plus plus. And then, it, and then I just do a hard cut, you know, from that one to the next one, adjusting the duration based on how I wanted it to be to set a goal. And then I just drag down my set a goal clip the one from up here that we'd looked at before, just dragged it down and trimmed it up, trimmed the edges of it so that it starts where I want it to, you know, so it starts right around the moment when they're about to uh, start setting their goal and trim it on the other end so that it's, it ends right after they've hit 10,000 as their goal. Um, one tricky thing, um, this is this app itself has a tip jar in it. It has a way, it's a way that I make money from the application. Is I ask people to you know pr uh, put in tips, um, and Apple recommends that you don't include any kind of pricing information or that kind of thing. A because it might change, and uh, B because it's going to be different for each country. And so you know if I show prices in dollars, that's going to not necessarily be representative or uh, helpful for somebody who's in another country. And so they recommend you get rid of that. And you can't see it, but it's in, it's in this section here. So if I remove the thing that I ultimately ended up doing, um, you know, you'll see it here. There's this, there's, I, had a I had a bunch of tip, 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 tip amounts. All I did to get rid of it is I just imported a, a white square as a, a graphical element, and I just overlaid it on the video over the area where I didn't want. Um, I didn't want to show anything. In this case, that works. It, you're not probably going to notice it because I do the thing up here to draw your eye to setting a goal. And so it's probably not problematic, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, that's, if you have anything that has information about, you know, information about pricing or things, you need, probably need to either be careful about how you record it so you don't have to show it, or alternatively, um, you also can, you can just do something like I did and hide it. Um, there is a requirement, I believe, for app previews that if, you sh if a feature is only available after an in-app purchase, you do have to indicate that um, in your app preview so that you're not being deceptive. You know, so if you, if you can't use the awesome Mega Ultra Blaster in your fighting game, then you're going to have to make sure you indicate that to your user. But I don't have anything like that. I'm just hiding it. So that's why this texture is just blanked out. So I, I take this, this clip in and layer it in here. The next thing I wanted to do um, is to show the user, user's taps, because if I don't, it just kind of, let me just delete these for a second and show you. If I don't, the numbers just sort of jump without anything really happening. You can just see the numbers just grow, and that's kind of confusing. Instead, what I wanted to do is make it so that there's a little indicator, a little something, let me make that bigger, um, a little something to draw your eye to it, so that when you look up here, there's a little tap indicator. Um, I'll have a link in the, the show notes for this to a place that I found it, but I just found somebody, uh, an artist who, had, so, who sold uh, a couple of pre-canned little clips um, of different tap gestures. And so this is the one for the tap that I just used. You can also do this with shapes and keyframes, which is a really cool method, but this is what I ended up doing because it's really simple. 
And so I just took this animation and overlaid it four times, um, indexing on when I, the user was going to be tapping, basically. So I just took this and dragged it down here. Um, the, this is much longer, and so I ended up speeding it up and adjusting the timing and things like that. Um, but it worked pretty well. And as you can see here, the way that I did, that did this, what worked best for me is I just played it and I set markers at every point um, in the video when I wanted to put one so it was easier for alignment purposes. Okay, and so that's how I did the set a goal part. And so now at this point, the video looks like this. You know, it's pedometer plus, set a goal, and then it shows you the user tapping on a thing three times. I did the same thing, dragged in the next basic title, another one of these, so that I have um, start walking. So now the user is going to start walking. Um, and these are all just hard jump, jump cuts. Like I'm not doing any kind of fancy swipes or dissolves or things because I found that those are actually more, they didn't fit aesthetically nearly as well. And so then I just show this clip. Um, so this is, I took that, that long walking clip and I just inserted it here. And then I adjusted the timing of this clip so that it ends, you know, so it gets to right here, nine, you know, 9,995 steps. It gets, hits that point right in the music before I want the crescendo, right at that very at that moment where it's like it's building up. You know, I, I, and I adjusted the timing of this just so that that would work. And you can basically do that with, um, you know, in, in Final Cut Pro, you can adjust the, you can change its duration or the speed of the climb of the, um, of the clip. Sorry, which one is it? It's this one, I think. Yeah. So I think I just set a custom speed here. Yeah, so it's running at 230% speed. Um, and I just played with the numbers until the timing worked out perfectly um, because it didn't actually really matter. You know, if, if this gets, this is sped up, there's nothing real about it. So it being fast shouldn't really bother anybody. So I hit this, you know, crescendo point, throw in another title very briefly, get fit. And as that, mu as that mu music hits, then uh, down comes the confetti. And it works pretty well, you know. So as they come here, boom, the confetti comes down. The music swells, life is good. And then I just finish it off um, with a couple of other titles. Re repeat the message, essentially, trying to be, you know, um, if, if you know, I tell the user a couple, like everything twice, so that hopefully it sticks with them a little bit better. You know, pedometer plus plus, set a goal, start walking, get fit, today. And today, the purpose of that thing, it's a little bit hokey, a little bit cheesy, but I wanted something that was a bit more of a call to action, a little bit more of a um, yes, like do something now, right? It's not just, I'm showing you how the app works. I'm showing, telling you the app works this way. And if you set a goal and start walking, you'll get fit. Do it now. Do, now is the time to do it. Go hit get, go download the app and get started. And the last thing I did in building out this preview was I added a uh, slow fade here so that the music sort of fades out and lets you know that the, the video is over. And uh, it's not quite as important actually in the way app previews work because as soon as they end, um, they cut quickly back to the app store, just the way the app store is structured. Is structured, but I thought that worked well in terms of just giving giving the the, the clip a bit of a, a finish. And that's it. Obviously, these videos are really simple compared to. I mean, obviously, even the video you're watching now is probably it took more time and effort to put together in some ways, because the video's end result for this is only 24 seconds. The hardest part is coming up with that message, coming up with what it is that you want to try and communicate to your user, to your customer about your application. Once you have that, once you know what that's gonna be, things get a lot easier and you're kind of off, off and running. And that's it for uh, today's tutorial. Hopefully that's helpful. That's how I made this app preview. Like I said, I'm not a, a pro at this. This is, you know, I'm a developer. But the process wasn't nearly as intimidating as I thought it would be uh, when I got started. And so I wanted to share that experience here. Uh, I'm not completely sure what my next tutorial video is going to be, but I expect to make many more of these. So if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing here on YouTube or on my blog. Um, and otherwise, if you have a great week, happy coding, and I will talk to you later. Bye.